Hi guys, so that's it, my treatments are finally done. They were done yesterday. So if you're new to my channel, um, I was diagnosed in May for invasive ductal carcinoma, and after one surgery, six chemotherapies, and 24 radiations, I have officially finished my treatments. I now move on to a um, estrogen blocker. So the ex the estrogen blocker is called Teximofen. I hope I've pronounced that right. When I was sat in for my final radiation, I did have a lady ask me if I wanted to join a trial, which was um, like an estrogen blocker that I was going to get prescribed and apparently has less side effects, but I actually, I just didn't want to to do it. I just want to do whatever the doctors told me to do and just get on with my life basically. So I do have burning from the radiation. I have it around, I've got like a sunburn around the chest area and also a burn under my arm. I'm going to show you what it looks like but it looks no more serious than if you were to burn yourself with a hot iron or if you burn yourself on the oven. So if you're a bit squeamish, three, two, one. So here you go, that's what it looks like. This scar here is from the surgery where they took the lymph nodes. And this here is the burn from the radiation. So it's in a really kind of awkward like place because it's under the arm and you're constantly like rubbing your arm all the time. So three, two, one, it's gone. What they've done is they um, prescribed me a couple of creams. One is a itch cream that you could just get over the counter here in Canada. And another one is this cream here, which is Flamazine. Um, and this has silver in it, so it has antibacterial agents in it. But once it's opened, you have to use it within seven days or something like that. So um, I'm trying to wait until I can get a full day out of it because I don't want to open it just for half a day. So tomorrow I'm going to be using this on my burns um, because apparently there's a possibility that it might open up and, and you know, it's a burn. So anyway, and um, when I had a nurse look at it and she was telling me that it's quite a possibility that some other burns may pop up in different areas. So we'll deal with that if that happens and I will let you guys know if that actually does happen or not. Um, obviously no scaremongering on this um, YouTube channel. I have been pretty good that way. Um, uh, if, uh, By the way, if you want to follow, I've documented quite a lot of this journey really well. Um, there's been no scaremongering on it um, and you can go back and check out this playlist. Um, I'll put the link down below so you can check out my other videos. So my estrogen blockers are covered under Alberta Healthcare, which I'm very thankful for. The hospital has been absolutely amazing. I have had nothing but the best care from um, the cross cancer in Edmonton, Canada. I know, don't let the accent confuse you. I am actually based in Canada. So as you can see, my eyebrows are starting to come in. There's a little bit more colour there, um, but they're still very, very light. Like obviously you can see these here, like if I just go away, it just looks like these here. But if you look, they're starting to fill in a little bit. The eyelashes are starting to come through a little bit as well. I was talking to my mum the other day and I was there like, maybe I should put some mascara on to see how much I have there kind of thing. The hair is coming through pretty well. I started tracking this on the 25th of November. I classed that as my final, final day where any effects of the chemotherapy could be affecting my hair because my, my last chemotherapy of injection was the 4th of November. And then I waited for that three week cycle and then I knew that the chemo was absolutely out of my system. So the 25th of November is the date that I am tracking and we are currently on the 5th of January right now. So this is the hair situation and it does seem to come through at different rates on different parts of your head. So this is the side, this is the front and here we go, let's just do an awkward thing at the back. I hope I've got it there so you can see. Oh, God, this has been a journey. This has been a journey. 
So basically I have to take a estrogen tablet every single day of my life for the next five to 10 years. The next step as well is to phone my regular GP up and book a, um, I'm going to actually book a PAP exam, which is a smear exam um, right away because I know I'm overdue on that and anybody else who is, you go and book your appointments too because prevention is better than cure. Um, and also, um, so I'm going to book for the PAP exam and then I'm also going to book a appointment in five months time. Um, they did say six months, but I know that I, I need to have an examination from a GP, like a natural physical examination in six months time. And also I need to book the mammogram and the ultrasound. I don't know whether I'm just being a bit silly about all this, but it's kind of like, oh, she said six months, it has to be six months. So, and I know I can't generally book in right away to have an ultrasound or mammogram. I mean, they did get me in pretty fast when I told them I had a lump, but I don't know whether they're going to get me in as quickly um, if this is just a check up after surgery maybe they will maybe they won't so anyway I need to phone my GP and book them to appointments um, and also I've been told that I've obviously got to check myself going forward so everybody out there like you really do have to check yourself and um, this is another reminder for me um, because I left it a little bit too long so my story was is you know like I found a lump and I just sat on it for a while and then then I started realizing I could feel something and then I phoned my GP I went and had the appointment and then I left it seven months before I went and booked my ultrasound and mammogram so yeah just make sure that you're following through and getting everything all done because it doesn't just because they say the cancer word it doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna have to have chemo and you're gonna lose your hair um, there are women that find it early enough that you just take the tumour out and you don't actually have to have any chemotherapy. Like there's loads of different treatments and if you find it early and get to the GP and get it sorted, like it's not as invasive. So don't think that cancer means death, don't think cancer means chemotherapy. Like there's lots of different treatments, there's lots of different stages. This is me returning back to normal life, trying to film a YouTube video while my cat is walking around carrying his toy. <laughs> so daily I do have to apply some moisturiser on the area so it doesn't dry out because basically you have been sunburnt. So that is what I am going to do. And also remember my nails. So I showed my oncologist the other day my nails. And she did say, yeah, there is a possibility of them falling off. So she wants me to file them down shorter because they are pretty bad. Let me just turn the camera around so you can have a look. It almost looks like I've had a shellac on it or something like that. I'm trying to get the, the zoom in. So see how it's like there's a ridge there and it's all discolored at the top. She said there's a possibility that these could actually fall off. So just file them right down and just be careful of them. And have you seen how, like, so I think my little finger's better showing you. So she's basically telling me that this nail has come away from the nail bed. Here you go. And that's why I've got this kind of like semicircle at the bottom here and it's not going straight across like my others. So yeah, you do have to be careful with your nails. Um, this was the last chemotherapy that did that. Like this one is particularly bad. Look at that. I've got no shellac on it. That is literally what the chemotherapy did to my nails. There's obviously all the emotional aspect of it all as well because I still feel pretty emotional. But it all, it's like, I feel as though that when I was going through all the treatments, it was there like, you know, I've got like six of these and I've got 24 of this and I've got da 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 and then it's like when he, when he finally stops and you've got time to think about it and time to think about what you've put your body through, it's like, it makes you, um, makes you realise it's, and I'm very, very grateful because I know a lot of people like don't make it and stuff and I'm very very grateful and I'd like to thank everybody for your support it's been thank you for being there for me I really really appreciate it um 
Oh. So where am I going with this channel? I'll probably go back to my regular sewing stuff and I'll give you guys some updates on stuff when they happen, like, you know, my six month scan and stuff like that. Um, any other side effects. I also want to keep track of my hair because I know that's really important for people. Like they want to know how long it's going to take. So yeah, I'll pop in from time to time and do some updates like that. And where my eyebrows are and where my eyelashes are and stuff so yeah i just want to say thank you a very very big thank you for everybody that's been there for me it means the world to me um yeah thank you once again bye guys